The Mike Mayo's Lunchbox is brought to you by Grandpa's Cafe in Dania. Hold the mayo. It's time for Mike Mayo's Lunchbox. Find out what's being served with Mike, Defo, and Luby, the only show that covers food, sports, and the proper maintenance of your car. And now, a man who had the distinction of having an entire health clinic named in his honor, Mike Mayo. I want the flim flam sauce with the awesome bay with Shafafa on the side. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> and I bet you weren't expecting us to uh, see us popping up on your screens, but it is time for a special Double header day on the lunchbox, and we've got. And I like a, the Marlins will probably win one of them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you imagine me, Defo, Luby. We all could have just gone on the field and won as many games as <laughs> exactly. your Miami Marlins exactly. at this point. But we're doing a special breakfast edition from our friends at Grandpa's Bakery, Cafe, Deli, Bagels, all that the good whole stuff. Board, the whole schmear. So. And uh, Mark Fried is going to be joining us, uh, proprietor extraordinaire. He's 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 conducting some very serious business in his office he's counting he's making candies for the passover holiday they do those chocolate non pareils you know those the, like i used to get the snow caps at the movie theater jeff give the forest yeah i uh, love those my favorite candy uh at the movie theaters and uh, they sell them here so uh, he'll be joining us in a second how are you this morning Depot? I'm doing great, man. I missed you guys the last couple of days. Had an uh, issue with my dog out there on Monday, and then Tuesday, uh, Patrick spot? Gunner usually fills my spot. <laughs> uh, he's doing well. I mean, uh, he seems to uh, have come around, and, and uh, he's doing well today, so I'm uh, very happy to report that. Was and, it uh, hemorrhoids, or was it some other issue? No, uh, you know, it's a thing that happens every once in a while with a dog. I, I don't know. I mean, with you doing an early bird, Mike <laughs> Mayo, <laughs> did you have to get in there before 10.30 or something to qualify for the dish? Count on the bagels. What was the, uh, what was the deal on that? It's the Schnorr and Schmear special. Exactly. I was going to come down there. And I was thinking, geez, I, I miss, uh, you know, watch, especially when you're at grandpa's. I, I always love watching you do the show because, uh, you know, I mean, you, you couldn't be happier. Uh, that that dissertation you did, I, I hope that, that we archive that when you were trying to sort of denounce the conclusion of the Sun Sentinel's bagel search for the best bagel. Oh. And then you went out and you bought some bagels from the place yes, that uh, you really had, uh, you know, no great feeling for, uh, no great attachment. And then you were trying to compare it to the grandpa's bagel. And you were going like internally to talk about the consistency of the dough and all of this uh, weird stuff that you were doing. But but I, I can tell you, you're just in your place here, Mike Mayo, although it looks like you're pulling another one here. Your dietary stunts, uh, just no, based no, on what I see on the It's going to be a new way of life. I don't want to get into that just yet. I do want to get into it. You know how, like, the Dolphins drafted the whole Ginn family? Well, today we've drafted the entire Luby family. We've got uh, the parents off in the wings. Oh, nice. And uh, in true oddball Lubit style, they ordered lunch for breakfast. They've got all these <laughs> looking at piled high uh, deli sandwiches, like a corned beef pastrami yeah, combo you know over there. I'll do. I see a knish, new, your knish that you thing. usually eat. The, the, yep. the, now, now, did they snore their way onto the uh, freebie ticket, or they... Uh, they are oh, their own devices. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you that. haven't decided that yet. Very nice. All right. You better make a decision soon. He'll probably end the sponsorship right after. Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it is a pleasure to be back here. And I got an old classic uh, from uh, my Brooklyn days. I don't know if you ever ate the Leo. Leo, hello. The Leo. Yeah, Leo, of course, stands for. What does it stand for, Ruby? Locks, eggs, and onions. Locks, it's actually oh, my father, uh, Robert Lubitz's favorite things. Now, I peg you more. But, like... but I mean, come on, Mayo, explain the tomatoes. Okay. Before you get going here, is this the first? Have you revealed this to the audience that you're back on this uh, insufferable quest to lose weight and uh, you're going to do the keto thing? And, and so you, you substituted, which. Don't even bother with the substitution. I mean, well, you're not going to eat those tomatoes, are you? you? See, this look in your the... screen. Luby is doing this. Oh, yeah. No, this is beautiful. I love this new technique. Aaron, the yeah. this, Lubis, this is something. Hey. This by... is a Reuben sandwich here. They had to get it. I know it's it's breakfast time, but they're Ataze deli sandwich fans. So we had to show that off. And their famous knish here. What do we got? They got the potato knish. Yep. And okay. That's Michelle Lewis, which I'm sure she's mortified. <laughs> <laughs> so making their lunchbox this view for breakfast, eating lunch uh, are uh, the Lubitzes. And uh, that seems like it could be a new movie, Meet the Lubitzes. No, right? we're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we've got Luby playing with the new toy. And this is at the suggestion of loyal viewer Craig Chasson, who I 
uh, run into the beach occasionally when I'm doing my walks of life. He also lives on Hollywood Beach near the Broadwalk, and we bump into each other, and he gives me uh, show notes, and he said, why can't you maybe get one a, a, se a second camera going? Uh, and today we've got three cameras going, one at the uh, Casa the de the Forest, but... Uh, yes. You know, to zoom in on the food and maybe when I take the occasional big bites and all that stuff, and I'm going to go in for my first bite. Do you, wanna, uh, you, oh, you want to? You don't they, need to oh, show that. No, I they think, can to see the it audience. there. <laughs> they see it close enough. <laughs> mm. I asked for a soft scramble. So let me ask you, okay, I thought we have discussed this in the past that you're going to, we want you to eat better. We're all for it, but we're not doing extremes. I thought we had sort of made a group decision that Mike Mayo because he lives in the extreme, we're going to learn to not do that. We're going to learn for Mike moderation. You Mike were calling yourself Mayo. that. So yeah. what happened? Well, some blood work came in. And this is not about losing weight, Defo. This is okay. about getting oh, the sugar. Yeah, the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So um, I'm all for it. I'm a thousand percent be, behind you. Um, leaning away from carbs and, and right. sugars. And so you, instead of seeing potatoes and, and bagels, which I have, of course, the bagel that comes included on the side, I had to get that, but I will be giving that away to the Lubitz, the entire whole Lubitz family that we <laughs> drank. You're not even going to bite into your favorite bagel yeah. in the city of Miami, Fort Lauderdale, in, in South go. Florida. And himself, Mark Fried, is getting onto the uh, stage here in the house. Get You get... He's right Defoe there. is right there. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good. Dog had issues, huh? Oh, the oh, track the last tree, week. Man. Yeah, put on the headset so everybody could hear you. All your, uh, the dog got more your attention than anybody. And we got and we got the candy man here, right? We got everything going on. All right, Mark Thanks, Freed. Put the microphone in front of prior. Uh, we'll get the microphone up. Perfect. Going. How you doing? Ready to roll. Skinny Good. Vinny. Skinny Vinny Between in my dreams. You and Pat Utter, you I'll guys are you shaving water. off uh, half the weight, and I'm taking it on. So I That's gotta, his. I gotta take it off again. So uh, how are you today? You don't look bad. Huh? <laughs> I didn't say you look good, but you don't look bad. Say, you look <laughs> 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 I was like, that was a compliment. <laughs> Almost. Exactly. I don't come off in so. It's like when I go to the bar and I say, no, I'm not drinking anymore. But what I'm not he, what, any less. what do you got to say over there? <laughs> well, I mean, the most often asked question at reunions, if there was a Sun Sentinel reunion, uh, would always be the first question to ask is, what happened to you? <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how you introduced, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway. but uh, he, he's claiming he's not going to bite into that bagel, Mark. And I, I say that he cannot resist. And then if he I, doesn't, it would be a disgrace I that he was that, even I at think, Grandpa's. I think this is better than a lock bet. I got some gloomy news on the blood work. The latest blood work is showing a little bit high on the sugars, so I'm trying uh, to avoid the carbs and trying to get no, myself back. I just shape. did some candy. I should have bought you some carbs. <laughs> Evil. It was non pareil, so yeah. I keep dying them in front of him. What do you think? Exactly. <laughs> of course, uh, Luby's got the beautiful bagel sandwich. What do you got there going there? The sausage, it's egg, and cheese. And I, what yeah. I like about their breakfast sandwich. Is usually a breakfast sandwich to give you like half an egg, a quarter of a piece of cheese, a bite of One a sausage, slice of bacon. a <laughs> tiny bagel, and never a side. Right. What they do here is they give you, I think it's two to three eggs. Yeah, it is. It's I think two to I think two pieces of cheese. It's two of like the massive sausage links, and then they not only give you a side, but they give you a heaping portion of a side, which again you never get with a breakfast sandwich. So really, two people honestly could probably eat this. I, I it's it's. Something to behold. I don't get it often because, like you, I try to watch my stuff, but it's been a while. So. Well, I, I just moved the water just so people see. There's no <laughs> potatoes on this Mr. Mayo tray. Mayo? No, he got tomatoes. He's got oh. tomatoes. I'm impressed. No, I mean, uh, uh, Defoe's already been ragging me uh, yeah, up and down because he just can't believe the fact there are no hash browns or home fries. Yeah, but, but, but you got to watch his leaf. Watch, Keep your eye on his fork because they're right there. <laughs> they're <on> the <laughs> right there. Uh, he, he'll be picking at that, no doubt about it. But the tomato substitution mm. is often a farce. I, I found that Delicious. to be the case. <laughs> People don't want the tomatoes. Uh, they, they're just uh, upset that they can't have the potatoes, so they bust the, uh, uh, the bones of the uh, proprietor and say, hey, can I have tomatoes instead? But there's, there's no way they're going to eat them. So. And then when we clean the table, they're sitting there. I got you. Yeah, that. exactly. Sometimes the tomatoes are an extra charge because they are more costly yeah, these, these days than days, the yeah. potatoes, right? But, no, uh, here, potatoes are more, I think. Are they? Oh, okay. So uh, 
here at Grandpa's, you get your choice, right? No uh, add-ons. Uh, well, looks good, though, Mike. I mean, a good start good. for your day. Well, I love the Tomatoes Leo. look good on him, right? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you uh, wear the, his uh, earrings. What I like about your Leo, your lox, eggs, and onions, is that you saute the onions first. Too many nice. places yep. that when I go order them, onions. they just dice them up like, like raw chunks. and just kind of throw them on the grill with the eggs, and they don't really get soft. But these are beautiful. Yeah, they probably don't sell them, though. That's why. <laughs> Maybe the guy don't want the so work. That's we, why he sends them out that way. What are your, I think we've talked about these with you, but I'm always curious. What are your thoughts on the the scooping of the bagel? As a guy who makes the hand roll bagels, you guys make our our favorite bagel in town. Right. When someone wants to desecrate a bagel by actually taking out half of it, what are your thoughts, Mr. Mark Fried? Do we like doing it? <laughs> I'm well, saying you don't or, like that. Or do I think Roll it's a smart thing sometimes forget, to do? Because forget. if you're watching your carbs, you're right. watching your calories, you still get all that flavor. Yeah, but you guys do a flagel. But wait, wait, True. wait. But there's still the same amount of flavor. <laughs> well, you can pretend to yourself. I know. You can lie. Like the tomatoes. <laughs> exactly. I think there are two issues at play here. Do you like seeing it done? And do you like doing it? Well, no one likes doing it. Right. Because no one wants Nobody wants work. to They wear gloves. They wear gloves and everything. But, right. I mean, yeah. I don't want somebody I mean, the whole bagel is like, listen, if I, I, I watch what I try to eat yeah. a little bit. Like if I could rip out the middle and still enjoy it, which I can, and it's enough because the bagels but, uh, are used. But can't you eat half? See, okay. what I do is eat half a bagel. Okay, there are several. I mean, that might be sacrilegious too, but <laughs> several strategies here. Number one, like you mentioned, why not just order a flagel if you don't want all the like thick bready stuff? Because in the it's mental. He says it's the same amount of bagel. <laughs> it's it's that's a mental thing, right? He there. says the same amount of bagel. I'm mental so. at this point. <laughs> but I ripped mine. I had tomatoes. one this morning with lox and cream cheese, and I'll tell you, I ripped out the whole middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I feel a little better. Like I can have. <laughs> like I can have lunch. Question number two: You guys sell. The mini bagels, why not just Mr. order that on the side instead of a whole bagel? And then you get less carbs and you feel better about yourself, too. And it, it gives you that full bagel satisfaction. I don't think so. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a matter of having of a little, having a little hold back. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to eat the whole thing. Or maybe I'll eat the other half for lunch. That's the thing with the your regular that's bagels. You that's why he stays felt. Are so large. I think you said six ounces, right? Or, or something yeah, along those big. lines. Yeah. That I'm more than satisfied eating just a half and then saving the other half for tomorrow and throw it in the toaster. Defo, are you buying that? No, I, I think everyone should <laughs> pull themselves. I, I, I I'm right there with you. you. Yeah. yeah. He might as well just eat more tomatoes. You guys I, I used to have this thing. Uh, I, I was a waiter very briefly at a place called the Sea Wayne Country Club in Hewlett Harbor, New York. And uh, one of the more horrifying things that would happen is uh, the women would order a salmon sandwich on split rye toast. Okay. I don't know if you've uh, had that. I'm sure it's come up maybe uh, at Grandpa's over the years. They wanted you to split the toast, uh, like one piece of rye bread, and split it in half the long no, way. The, the, the long way? Like put it the in long the way. Not earth. not like uh, half a piece of bread, which you could have had a half a sandwich, which would have been just as easy, as you're pointing out, Mark, to uh, Mayo Man. It's like you can't disguise the fact that you're still eating the same amount of calories. So you had to you know, take one piece of bread and uh, split it in half the long way and then toast it. So you yeah, put the sandwich together on that. It's, yeah. like, it's like making wow. it a Tough really cut. skinny. Like, you know those little Melba toast crackers they sell? Yeah. Like, they're so thin. My mother used to eat I think those. they're thinner than those ribeyes they were selling for $20 for 40 of them the other week in the truck. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that... That's pretty thin bread. I, 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 yeah, it was a pain in the literally a pain in the ass, and uh, you know it, it was a very common order at this particular place. So this is going back many many years, but uh, it, it just right. you're fooling yourself, lady, is what we wanted to say. <laughs> except we, we didn't have yeah, the authority to do that. Now you're calling them lady? No, that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Question anything he it was New York. I mean, we're talking about Hewlett Harbor, New York. <laughs> now let me ask you a couple. Listen, questions. lady, oh, when you said salmon, is it like Nova, like the sliced lox, or an actual like poached salmon? Uh, uh, like a salmon, you know. I mean, uh, if you were guy. Yeah, you know, more like a tuna sandwich, but uh, with salmon. Uh, like that salad, kind of thing. Oh, the big yeah. salmon salad, yeah. like that. Which they no, not a salad. Like no, they, this oh. was uh, on a sandwich, but instead of having half a sandwich, they wanted the one piece of rye bread split the long way, so it seemed like they were having a whole sandwich. Right. <laughs> that's not a bad. That's if you could yeah, cut it. It's that, not a bad like, feel because you feel like you have a whole sandwich. Right. Yes. Exactly. Once I'm doing that, just put it on one piece of bread, cut it in half, and then yeah. put the other half. There you go. Other half yeah. on a tomato. And then no. you feel like well, you, you, know, you know, a few years ago, pickles got pickle sandwiches pickle became sandwich a hot thing. No, and if you like, salt, though, if you like problem. pickles, yeah. instead of having bread, they used to cut a big pickle in half. I yeah. saw and that. make a sandwich on the pickles, but uh, no, but the salt. Listen, so now you're trading carbs for salt. Listen, like, there's something to be said about a piece of bread. Yeah, obviously. Yes, there is, but. Uh, <laughs> no, I could really I, get him in trouble. Watch, I'm going to pick up no, the no, mayo no, I'm gonna, no, no, I'm just no, going to no. put one potato no, on it. No, don't. 
and Don't I'm going to just dangle it. I'm not going to be – you're going to be shocked about my discipline. Like, oh, Pat look at He's got it right there. That's good. I know you, uh, we missed you on the I show yesterday, uh, Defo, but Pat Utter was very perceptive. He says he knows me a long time. He knows – that when I put my mind to something, I can it. be very focused and very disciplined. You are going to be prepared to be shocked over but, the next three that's to four great, months, you gentlemen. can enjoy what you enjoy. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, the, the only problem with this, Mark, is, yeah, is that annoying, this don't is annoying. about the 15th campaign of this uh, nature. That we <laughs> well, and, and, and then we have to listen to every detail. Well, I could eat this, but I can have that, but I can't have this. And it's like, you just <laughs> shove it in your mouth or don't so eat that, it at all. I mean, we don't care about all of this. Yes, yes. I am. I got it. This is, let me give you an analogy. I'm the Sir Gusa of Dyer. <laughs> Sir Gusa is the horse that is owned by yeah. our friend Joe Esposito. I was in Cafe Seville last night. I saw Joey. I saw Sally. I saw, of course, uh, Coach, Coach Marty, and a couple of uh, other regulars there. Love seeing Joey. Even though, uh, you know, his man, Joe Arsino, his horse, Hades, didn't run exactly that great in the Florida Derby. Um, but that was a Joe, romp, huh? Joey is still – Joe Orsino is still kind of um, – High on him, and he's going to run him back in one of the, I guess, uh, stakes races up in Keeneland, trying to get some derby points so he could start on the Kentucky Derby because he's still high on the horse. There was nothing wrong with him. He just got outrun by that fierceness. Um, and then Sergusa, of course, who was like 0 for 15 now. Joey didn't especially like me reminding him of that. But Sergusa is going for that elusive maiden victory this Thursday at Tampa Bay. Uh, he will be All running. Right. And we hope for the best for Sir Gusa. But the way that Sir Gusa keeps going out there and trying to get that first win, go break his maiden, get into the winner's circle, and fall short that's time. me <laughs> with my various diets and lifestyle modifications. But I actually do agree with Devon on this. Can we not make it a topic of discussion? Yeah, like every every bite that you take, who, we don't who, need to have who's an ounce. The one? Today it's us. I'm yeah. owning it. Right. But henceforth... Henceforth, you know, I show up with tomatoes on the plate, and they well, think that ridiculous. I have like five heads, and then I'm like in the middle of some uh, transition. Because I feel like that's something, something you would mock on Let's Eat. I feel like if yes. someone tried to do that, you'd go, "Yeah, eat your tomatoes, and then later have a slice of pizza." Like no, I feel I like think, I think that's great for you. I think I would be great for me, but yeah. I don't. I'm I don't proud of him if he just doesn't annoy us. That's the thing is he'll do this and well, then make annoying. it. Well, I'm saying the praises. If he can't annoy us, so what is he going <laughs> to do here? <laughs> yeah. This ended up uh, being a little ill-fated when the uh, subway people had the Jared campaign because of well, the fact that uh, you know he turned into you know no, a, we're not gonna well, I had a bit of an uh, incendiary I, character. But uh, you know the the idea that he was able to lose sixty pounds or whatever it was by going to subway. Perhaps we could get a campaign going since Mayo's right across the street, where Grandpa's sponsors. This weight loss, and then you know, <laughs> every Monday we can have him weigh in, but he eats all of his meals at Grandpa's and loses like fifty pounds. That would be awesome. Come That's to Grandpa's good. for the best bagels, which Mayo yes. can't eat. So, <laughs> no, but you show everything Come, else come get there. Mayo's bagels. That's exactly. what it is. Your bagels, exactly, and potatoes. Oh man, so. um all right, enough of my silly diet. So I had a great horse story. I oh, yeah, go ahead. Horse. I want to hear So I looked at the story. races the other day. Yeah. I think it was on Gulfstream, but I'm not sure if it was Gulfstream or Agatha. Oh, no, he's a man. Of and I, I just had a grandson. So there was a oh, horse running, thing. Grandpa's Kid. Oh, oh nice. I'm like, I don't need to look at the tally. I don't need to do nothing. I'm going to bet Grandpa's Kid. Yeah, so the race goes on, and I put like a few dollars on the five, which is Grandpa's yeah. Kid. And I just play the exact, the 5156. Why I picked 5156, I don't know. Because you're from Long Island? No, you're not Long Island. But down the street. Stretch day come, the six is beating the five, and I need the five to beat the yeah, six. I got nothing that, the other yeah. way. So I'm start yelling. My wife's in the other room. She just got out of the shower. She st I start yelling, go, go, Denver. The kid, my grandson's name is Denver. And I'm uh, yelling, go, effing Denver. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yelling, go, Denver, go, get that in, effing horse. And I'm like, going crazy. My wife comes out, what's going on? And the six, grand, the five, grandpa's kid, he got up. Beat him. I won like 80 bucks. Nice. Oh, sweet. I called my daughter. I said, Dakota, I won 80 bucks on grandpa's kid. I was yelling for Denver. I said, so tell Denver. And he's only three months old, yeah. so he doesn't understand he I said to him, I owe him 40 bucks. She says, Dad, I used to get that 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> <I> said, <"Over." laughs> my grandson gets it. Now and that's my whole generation. story that's for today. Classic. That's good. I you're enjoying being a crap. It's your first one. First it's second. unbelievable. Yeah, I, I'll show you, you videos later. That'll blow your mind. Yeah, That's great. he rolled over the other day. He holds oh, nice. his neck up. He's oh, good. Wow. He's good That's to go, man. The best part of, I guess, being a grandparent is you get to give him back at the yes. end of the day. You know, <laughs> I don't want to give him back. Oh, oh. Well, well, you're, not now, anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go see him when he becomes 14. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, they all want this grandpa. Yeah, Don't worry. Grandpa. Grandpa's always the best. Uh, that that 40 awful. bucks could ruin him, though, Mark, because uh, <laughs> exactly. when I show up at my uh, son's house to visit my grandkids, uh, the first thing uh, either of them says to me, whoever comes to the door first says, hey, Grandpa Defoe, you got a stick? Meaning a hundred dollar bill because they, they they've been spoiled. Every time we show up, we like grease them with a hundred. So nice. So be careful. Be well, careful. I start them with forty. I don't go right to the stick. Yeah. Well, sure. they they don't even care about twenties anymore. They don't even appreciate them. It's like That's you're like at a casino and they hand you sixteen twenties. You're like, yeah. how about some? How about some hundred dollar bills? But uh, yeah. Hey, Grandpa, do you have a stick? Is one of my favorite <laughs> greetings uh, of all time. Benny, he's, Benny. The, he's the king of the uh, of slang. The track lingo, of the track Sticks lingo. are hundreds. I always heard Benji's, you know. Benji's. Uh, and then he also says, of course, uh, dimes. A dime for a grand. Are a grand. Nickel, 500, dime, 1,000. That, that's fairly standard, though. Right? I've heard the, this uh, from a lot of community, yeah. Uh, uh, so Joey and his the gang, they hit the giveaway pick six on Sunday. And they oh, yeah? up. They each got a dime. It was an nice. eight-time nice. uh, uh, give it mandatory, so good for them. Uh, they also hit some pick fives all day on Saturday, even though they didn't have the big race. But nice. uh, anyway, um, we missed you last time, and I gave my whole dissertation about how messed up that whole Sun Sentinel Best Bagel competition <laughs> thing was. Yeah. I don't know if you want to get into it, but I did bring I don't, in, I, don't know, I don't think it's worth even the, the, the air, the air I, that comes out, because it's the way they do it. I know. you Listen, don't. You, I wish you, the you, critics yes. would just take the top five, Sit down in one spot. Bring the five owners if you want. No, I have a blind and, tasting. And, and do what you want to do, but let them decide, not people you call California. You call. I'm not a sore loser, well, <laughs> but it makes no sense no, when the, you could just have good social media and the best social media wins, not the best bagel. That's my no, opinion. And, yes, the, that's and of is. course, the methodology is flawed because you have people voting for their local favorite who had never tasted the other four finalists. Correct. So what kind of what kind of uh, winner is that? Exactly. It's what and what the Sun Sentinel did at one point after I just left, they conducted a best wings competition and did, did that the right way. They get they solicited reader input to for the nominees and the finalists. Then they did that through some voting and then right. they got the top five together. They assembled a dis distinguished panel of eaters, including me. At that right. point, I had left the paper, but we did a blind test tasting of the wings, and then Listen, we declared a okay, winner. I'm okay losing, but I won't just lose fairly. Lose fairly. You know, I, I mean, I don't want them to hate me for saying that, but to no, me, I'll put out. You know, I'll lose if I lose, then I was supposed to lose, not lose because of the wrong. And, and in the interests of science and 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 the uh, food, I went and I checked out the you know the other competitors up in Pompano, right. and it was an underdone bagel. I mean. It was a machine-made bagel. They do bake them in house. Um, I just wasn't as impressed with their overall. Like the outer shell wasn't as look crunchy, up. and you know, and, right. and I brought like, them in. I should, a lot I of them have trouble them. getting that brown golden yeah. color. It's yeah, hard. it's not easy in Florida, but we figured it out. And, you figured it out, yeah. didn't they? Back in the day, they used to dip it and boil it in lye, and that gave it that outer no, sheen. They never used lye. No, I still, I'm not lying. L y e, which obviously can be poisonous when mispro, you know, that if sounds you're like a great item. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought in the old, I, back in the day, and what, remember, wasn't that an ingredient lye. in the New York street pretzel? Lye. It might have, been. and that, and that may be why brown. they changed so much over the years. That's yeah, because uh, it, it was a whole different, uh, you know, you, you go to uh, New York now and you get a pretzel off the street, still great, but uh, not like it was back in the day when I think they used right. lye as, I, uh, as part yeah. of the ingredients. So but I'm not I, crazy, I, I but know you we always just slide bagels. the bagels in, they got cornmeal on them, and that's all you, I know you that ever went them, in there you for, baked them, for you 36 baked, years. You did it yeah. in Corsi, right? Yeah. Where I started off. I, for some reason, I thought some of those classic old school uh, Brooklyn bagel stops so. did it. But I'm going to look it up. Uh, we'll go to the food historian. Uh, Maybe Carlos Frias knows that because he's kind of one of those guys. He's Good. one of these food historians. You got a lot of time. You could look into it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh -oh. I have way too much time on my hands. But I mean, that whole bagel uh, judging thing, uh, you know, deciding which is the best bagel. Uh, Luby and I had issues all the time with the uh, New Times that used to do the best radio personalities oh, yeah. and shows. Yep. And we were never included in this thing. And uh, we're looking at some guy that we would endlessly disparage. And he would be the most popular <laughs> radio personality. And we weren't even in the also mentioned or whatever. And uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, you, you can't put too much stock in this because uh, th there's a lot That's of favorites. You know what? As long as you get in the top five, say, even, yeah. and you yeah. get notoriety, and you know what? People are happy, and they come here, and I draw from quite a bit of ways, and you know what? Do the best you can, and that's it. When, as you've learned from Let's Eat, sometimes debate isn't the worst thing. No. It, no. it brought, and it no, brings people in. it's better to have that. Yes, it's better to have that, that whatever they call it, he went in there. Chatter. He went there and ate their bagel. 
Yeah. When, oh, when I went to the other way. And he's here to talk about it. And I've been here. Yeah. And, and, you know, I try to be as <laughs> unbiased like, as possible. Shut up about them. <laughs> when it comes to, uh, sorry, Matt. No, I'm like kidding. He, he spent right. endless hours on the show about this. See, he is so upset you know? about this outcome. No, I mean, it just seemed like it was rigged. You know, sometimes <laughs> we talk about rigged elections. Maybe uh, Otani in this was country. involved. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like, but, you know what? If you tell me I think that Otani had look, action on the other place. Tell me if that bagel involved. looked like this and tasted like this. Nah, yeah, I, I mean, deserve to lose. A, I got big shoulders. I'm a big boy. I lose how looking bagels. I urge everybody, if you've never been here, come on out. It's yep. in Dania Beach. My parents, by the way, are tr haven't been here since the change, since yeah. you guys took over and made it their favorite, a real deal New York style deli. And Michelle and Robert Lubitz, and they went lunch, not because they're weirdos, but because they love a nice big sandwich and there's not a lot of places that do it right. these days. So I was like, you guys have to get it. The May was talking about the corned beef pastrami combo, combo which yep. we haven't actually had on here. So oh, I showed it. it. Oh, have we? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. showed it to everyone uh, on the air and it's... You want look, something else? No. Right on, <laughs> We've had enough. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, they've heard about grandpas and they had to come in. No, and it's nice that you brought Thank the you. folks. And uh, again... It's worth a drive to check it out. Again, this is classic New York bagels made every day in-house, the old-fashioned way, uh, big and crunchy and delicious. And then, of course, you got all the other items. Do you ever eat, brec like, uh, you know, pastrami sandwiches for breakfast at 10, 1030 in the morning? No. No. <laughs> says, no, no, no don't even ask me just Only you, Mr. Do you eat them? Of course I eat them. Of course, like, I don't eat them. Done. It's like noon, <laughs> you know, like that Larry David episode where you can't get breakfast after 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's the stupidest. Should, I, no, I didn't not think here. you, you could, could get, get breakfast a pastrami sandwich. Sandwich. You could get anything. Well, you know, too early, it goes in the steamer at a certain yeah. time. Right. So you got to let it get meats. hot. You got to so loosen it up. you may not have the, the warmest corn. They enjoy it. So I believe yeah. they enjoy it. It's probably the first one he ever had. You got to render the fat. You got to steam it. You got to let it loosen up. You got to get that. Yeah, you got to let them, you know. Yeah. But if they come in too early, I don't really sell too many of those. Yeah. That was my request, and your guys did a great job, and they have enjoyed it this as is the we we're talking it. about they are you know um yeah they didn't it. ask for it it was me you know you, me i'm a weirdo <laughs> of course i you are. Love right in my book oh we love you but they they <laughs> i love singing the praises and i wanted them to get the full i have let them try i wanted them to get the full experience you right. know like we're here Hey, uh, let's take our first break. You can stick around because we got to talk about upcoming Passover holiday. Oh, yeah. Guys going on? Be Brisket doing? time. Brisket yes. time. Um, and Sounds like a plan. Matzo ball soup. All right. No All no potatoes stuff. while we go. Um, <laughs> no cheating while everybody's I'm coming looking. back. That one better okay. be there. <laughs> we'll be back with more on <laughs> the line. Hey, let, me, let me first give it a good word about our friends at uh, Visit Lauderdale Food Wine Festival. They got an upcoming event this month. It's not just one week on the calendar anymore during no, the sir. year. They are now doing special events and things all throughout the year and on april 13th saturday noon primo liquors the primo out in weston on weston road they're having a special elevate your brunch game cocktail class beyond mimosas uh, beyond mimosas and uh two really expert great mi mixologists are going to be involved uh and uh they are going to show you uh tricks of the trade of making things other than just bloody marys and mimosas they're going to be teaching you how to make a Kira royale an espresso martini and one other thing that I forget because my my, wife's my, my, my mind, my, my brain is already the other missing the carbs. Oh, those potatoes. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, BLfoodwine.com is the website. Go online and buy those tickets for that great Beyond uh, Mimosas brunch cocktail nice. event, April 13th. And you can also, once you're on VLfoodwine.com, go get your early bird tickets for next year's Grand Tasting in January. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and you can get great pricing right now, half off. The usual great rates, vlfoodwine.com. We hope to see you out there on the 13th, Primo Liquors, Weston. All right, we'll be back with more on the Lunchbox with Mark Fried after these words. See you later. You know, when the Brooklyn boy in me wants a good bagel with Nova or some matzo ball soup, homemade knishes, or a great deli pastrami sandwich on rye, you know where I go? Grandpa's Cafe in Dania Beach. It's been around a long time, an institution, but a little over a year ago, a pair of New Yorkers came in, bought it, and refurbished the place. It's beautiful, and they are now serving great breakfast, brunch, lunch. They've got the omelets. They've got Eggs Benedict. They've got all kinds of great baked goods like Ruggleth. Grandpa's is just off Federal Highway on Southwest 1st Street in Dania Beach. It's open seven days. Go in there. Tell them that the lunchbox sent you. When people come to me and say, Mike, where should I go out to eat? I got guests coming from out of town. Where should we go? Cafe Seville. That's the answer. 2768 East Oakland Park Boulevard. It's a Fort Lauderdale perennial. 
serving the finest in Spanish and continental cuisine in a cozy, friendly, comfortable setting. Joey Esposito and Sally, his better half, they've been running the place for a long time. It's been open since the 1980s. They got great Spanish classics like paella, shrimp with garlic sauce, and all kinds of great seafood dishes. The stuffed veal chop, oh, that's my favorite. Go to Cafe Seville. It's open every day but Sunday at 5 p.m. for dinner. Tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defoe sent you. Do you like burgers? Do you like wings? Do you like late night food and sports on big screen TVs and cold beer and friendly vibe and great people? Then you want to check out Shenanigans, 1300 South Federal Highway in Dania Beach. Go to Shenanigans, you get yourself all the good stuff, the fresh fish every day, the black and grilled wings, and of course the kitchens are open late. Go there, tell them that the Lunchbox Mayo and Defo sent you. Here for Prezzo Italian Restaurants, two locations, Boca Raton at Park Place on Military Trail and Palm Beach Gardens in the PGA Commons on PGA Boulevard. Contemporary Italian cuisine with house-made pastas, wood-fired pizzas, salads, veal, chicken, and of course their famous focaccia bread with oven-roasted garlic bulbs. In Garlic We Trust is their slogan, and you can trust Prezzo for a great experience with gracious service and tremendous value. Open seven days featuring brunch, lunch, dinner, and happy hour. Great wine deals and full bar at both locations. For reservations and more information, go to eatprezzo.com. All right. We're back on the lunchbox at Grandpa's with Mark Freed, proprietor of Defoe's back in uh, his home base. We've got Luby and the parents uh, eating the whole left side of the menu. Um, <laughs> I can't get enough of these delicious tomatoes, Mark. They Freed, are but, nice. Yeah, they're nice today, tomatoes, yeah. actually. Ah, I mean, I was not giving you a crap. Just you know close what? your eyes and make believe they're potatoes. I don't miss them. I don't miss potatoes and fried food and all that good stuff. Ah. Um, we were talking a little bit about, you know. Well, when did you start this? This morning? Me? Um, yeah. Because I was with him yesterday. And he was, oh, he, he was doing it yesterday? Okay. No, he was not doing it yesterday. So. Oh, uh, how bad was that number, Mayo? He's, he's, always, he's, just, he's Wait, always on his second box of tomatoes. But I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always funny. People start this stuff and they uh, say, oh, oh, the tomatoes. And then uh, the next day they're, they're eating like a bucket full of mashed potatoes. So, Listen, uh, it's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. They don't understand. It's It's... It's a battle. It's, it's a never-ending battle. battle. No, it's not easy, obviously. Yeah. Hey, before we get into Passover and all the stuff that you're going to be doing here, during the break, you were talking about how you used to, you know, uh, another one of our great sponsors, Gilbert's, and they do a great job. Yeah, I'm going to go there. The sandwiches. Do a great but job. I'm going to go visit them. you are familiar with them from From the Singers was the uh, catering place for Bar Mitzvahs in Rockland County, Spring Valley. And they had a place, I guess, uh, and they talked about the roast pork on garlic bread. And I haven't seen that in, oh, my God, that'll be 35, 40 years. And I, I'm i going there to get one. They do it uh, a great job. And what's the it. lady's name? Because I'll say hello. Lenore. 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 Lenore you yeah, know, you guys uh, beat on her a little bit. Oh, we, we No, she's we the have, best. She beats on us. We have a good back and forth. <laughs> you know, she's one of those New Yorkers, Mark, that, you know, she can yeah. dish it out and take it a little bit. That's why we love her. And that's why. Uh, I know, knew Bobby. Takes, Bobby, but, he's, he's around still? Or? No, he yes. unfortunately passed a, f yeah. a few years back, probably five or six years. And uh, wow. But I used to run into him at Gulfstream and the poker table swap. Mm. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, talk about Pesach. Pesach is coming up first Seder night, Monday, April 22nd. Uh, what you got going on here in terms of uh, catering and oh. special uh, dinners? And, and We're going to do small packages and uh, pretty simple. And for us, it's simple because we have... The our main guy in the back who does all this. So we'll have simis, we'll have potato kugel, matzo stuffing. Oh, fall, nice. Fawful kugel, gefilte fish, brisket, turkey. I love the fawful kugel. And then, kugel. of course, we have a consomme soup, matzo ball soup, chicken soup, and anything else you want. Whatever you guys can think of, we'll get it for you. Potato, nice. Potato pancakes, um, yeah. you know, all the good stuff. All the all the don't tomato all the tomato, tomato calories. Stuff you get. <laughs> <laughs> Simis, for those who don't know, maybe uh, Jewish food is the carrots, carrots, or? and I think oh, marshmallows. They, they, oh, nice! It's a very sweet dish. Yeah, it's off my list for this yeah, year. So but anybody that, who needs to get sweeter, I eat simis. Farfel kugel, though. Uh, explain what farfel is. I, I love know. that. You it's don't know. It's a grain. It's a grain. It's a grain. They're all yeah. grains. Anything it's, that they can eat is more grain than. than yeah, I mean, there's like kasha, which is in kasha varnish, because in kasha kanish, and that's buckwheat. And the farfel is more like a little bit of a like a a, a wheat, you know. It's kind of like a. Right. It's good though. Uh, it really is. Orzo and and or of something. course, we'll have all the chopped liver you need. Chopped well, liver is unbelievable. How about gefilte fish? Because that's gefilte fish favorite. too. No, it's not. Is it? 
No, he he's lying. He's lying. My parents are Nicka Filter fans. See, that's right. what I told you. And I could tell he was yeah. fibbing. I saw his nose. He's not Nicka Filter fans. I'm not seeing him really honest. Defoe has like. A lifelong uh, scars from, I guess, the, the filter fish. What would your mother make you fish? It, it was the jelly on the bottom, though, of the jar. Yeah. And then, you know, the whole concept of a fish being in a jar in the first place uh, you know, seemed a little bit <laughs> odd to me. But, uh, no, I never was a big fan of it. Uh, I, I think, you know, like Mayo has had a couple of bad experiences here and there with uh, different things. Tequila was one he yeah, often has referenced. Uh, I can't but he's slowly I coming around on that. I, I don't know that I'm coming around on gefilte fish because I'm unlikely to try it again. Well, let's put it that way. But I'm sure it's excellent. And, and and people do love it. My mother loved all of that stuff. She loved take schmaltz the, herring take the, and take the jelly uh, off, Bifo. Take the jelly off. Well, I'm worried yeah. you can't your ma- your more horse radish, You guys, you guys do matzo ball jelly. soup. Yeah, yeah. Cool. it's a staple for Passover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and this soup is great. Everybody I loves love it. your matzo ball soup. I love the broth. I love the chunks of chicken. You know, you get a nice no jelly, no jelly. <laughs> <laughs> because you're using the real chicken stock when you put it in the fridge, you, you get, get a jelly. A so little now gelatinous. Now I know, and I want to get Bifo out of here. I'm just chasing the jelly. Send me a jar of filter yeah and i'm, uh, I'm out the jelly. door <laughs> <laughs> jelly how about that there's something about it but i understand it, it is it's gross yeah, yeah. you don't know but what you that don't want jarred, that's the whole take point. the jelly off <laughs> and then there was a, a fish in there i mean please about 30 yeah. years you know it's crazy but when i was a kid when we had these big family satyrs out on long island 50 of us from our cousins club i was loved, great though i had that also i asked for extra jelly i love matzah Gefilte fish sliced are also kind of like in little thin chunks that you spread on the matzo. We'll slap on that jelly and some of the purple horseradish, the red horseradish. Oh, I could eat that uh, until so, the four questions were over. So, so, so it's bad, Defo. You didn't go to the same Seder as him. And yes. he would have ate all the jelly, and you would have never had that problem with the jelly. See, just looking at it was uh, enough to deter me from uh, thinking that this was uh, going to be I, something I, I, I was going to enjoy. Let's get yeah. to it. Well, the thing was, in my family, they just absolutely murdered the brisket every year. So I had to fill up on the gefilte fish because you couldn't yeah. get – the brisket was almost inedible. Unlike here at Grandpa's, I can attest because for the last few holiday meals, I – for uh, Hanukkah and uh, God rest her soul, one of my mom's last holiday meals was for Hanukkah when I made – I make my own potato latkes, That's but good. we brought in a whole bunch of the uh, turkey and the brisket from here. And man, Clive sliced it up, and he got that gravy and gravy on the side. That brisket is beautiful that beautiful. you have here. So perfect yeah. for the holidays. Beautiful. Again, if you want to order for the Passover holidays, it's going to be nine five four nine two three two one six three. Again, nine five four nine two three twenty one sixty three is the phone number here to place your catering orders for grandpa's. Do you have online ordering capabilities? No, just call and ask for just Clive. It's a little more. Clive. Do you guys involved him with any of the delivery apps? Yeah, Uber Eats. Oh, you are okay. Yeah, and then once we get all these buildings up and running, we're gonna add more. Oh yeah, yeah they're doing yeah. a lot of running. Yeah, yeah, you must a love lot of seeing building. that go. Every every floor they add, you see and more. I'm friendly, and I'm friendly. I'm friendly. I'm friendly with the He's guy. He's like Johnny Manziel. <laughs> and I'm friendly with the guy across the street, and he says, "Don't worry." On this side, he's putting in like the second and third floor. It's gonna be LA Fitness on top. Ooh. So and. Who knows? He's That's just good. a good guy. You'll see yeah, him. they're going to want to eat, though. That's great. They're going to need a baby. I'll do a <laughs> I'm going to do a side bowls. Watch. <laughs> oh, no. Good for you. Yeah. There you go. That's smart. That's my move. daughter's generation, they go crazy for yeah. that stuff. My wife Those loves bowls, yeah. smoothies. We did them in New York. You can do smoothies, time. I guess, you if you want Yeah, I'll do as much as I can. I yeah. No, no. Because no, they'll no. come in. In their lycra it, and though. spandex after yeah. their workouts, they'll start with the acai bowls, but you'll turn them. You you'll, spandex? You'll put, you'll put a <laughs> no. potato Mayo, you on a fork. Spandex? Oh, God, you don't want to see me. No, that. you no. don't want to see me either. I'm just asking. I'd I rather know. see you than him, but no, we'll stay away from the spandex. <laughs> Even 40 pounds lighter, you don't want to see me in spandex. Uh, I'll man. buy him this first pair of spandex <laughs> if he stays off those potatoes. Oh, Jesus. I have not done it yet. No, you're doing mm, well. Those tomatoes are good. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know where I am. Do you want to? Oh, let's. I'll tell you. I'll tell you a fast, oh. funny story. I, I go ahead. We had a barbecue at my place. I live in Deerfield Beach, and I brought. It was a barbecue, with like ten people. I brought a tray of the brisket, like you said, and I yeah. put like three, three and a half pounds in there. And I just, everybody brings food. It's like everybody bring what you're gonna eat. I brought three pounds, and I used the Azure juice, which I think is so much better than the. To me, I like better than the than the, the thicker gravy. Right. I like the Azure. Yeah. And I put it the whole metal tray right on the grill. Moved yeah. it around, felt it Heated coming it up. up with the yeah. steam. I put a thing of French fries on the grill, just like that. Oh, nice. tray. And I'll tell you what, I watched 10 people Nick eat brisket it. and fries, and I felt bad <laughs> for the other guy with the chicken kebabs and the chicken <laughs> and the hamburgers. Everybody ate brisket. I said, oh, my God. And they thanked me to come. And I got a personal invite all the time. Nice. No, but it is interesting because – and I. 
I didn't realize how good brisket could be. And I love my grandma. She was a great baker. She did some interesting things with food. And she was a phenomenal baker. But she would overcook the crap right. out of the brisket. And tried it out. And I feel like every and every Jewish boy or girl grew up. And you had to eat with it. With that, you had to eat you it. You had to eat it. Because well, the flavor wasn't horrible. It was just it was totally Dry. done. And what's interesting is my mother and what you guys like sort of learned from that. And and because until I started having like barbecue brisket, where right. they they smoke it in it juicy and it's yeah, right. flavorful. The fat renders into the flavorful. Itself, right? yeah. And I've now gone to delis like Grandpa's where you guys do take well, your time and are very patient and smart about how you do it. It's like, okay, so then why did my grandma do that? <laughs> so so I think just knowing that we put it on that tray and we added the au jour juice, it like steamed yeah. it and made it so juicy. And I right. brought a, a whole rye bread nice. and it was like right out of the oven. And I tell you, it was unbelievable. I, I when I left, what I got you, I don't know. I never thought I'd get invited back, and now I'm invited <laughs> back all the time. So, like, if you put brisket on rye, do you put any condiments with it? I know this guy would probably look at the ketchup, ketchup bottle. Oh my on, god, on the brisket, brisket too. But you want to know something? No. something? If you get a, I'm going to tell you what to do next time. Order your brisket on rye, nothing on it, and order a side little cup of orgeau juice and dip it. Just dip and like gonna, a French dip. And you'll French. and you'll except they yeah. call it a Brooklyn dip. You know, that's a Brooklyn yeah. dip. Yeah, and then you'll you'll you won't need the extra. Sweetness of sugar and take away the flavor of the brisket. I don't mind a little like, like horseradish mustard or, or the deli mustard, like a little dip of that with uh, right. sometimes. Not for me though. Not for you. No, I just you're a purist. I'm a purist. No, but it's true. When I get a French dip, I don't do ketchup. I, I and, don't feel like that, a sandwich right. needs something. And that'll work the same way for you if you dip it into that au jour. It's and natural. It, and it soaks the rye bread yep. and it's it's delicious. It maybe we'll get maybe we'll share one of those right now. And, when, and you know, we're going sick. deep into <laughs> deep dive on brisket, but the way that again that it's trimmed and sliced where you get that little ribbon the of layer, fat, yeah. but not too much right. fat, and it gives right. it enough of the it fat needs and flavor. It. it needs a little bit. Yeah, no, when you have brisket that's too lean, it's uh yeah. well it becomes it's dry, dry too. Yeah. It gets dry easier. So these guys do the best. Oh, and just to again reiterate, you guys are open throughout the Passover holiday, uh yep. so that you know, for those who still want your bagels, if you're not not Jewish and not keeping being kosher for Passover, we'll you can be come here. in here and get your fix. 365 a year, open every day. Nice. And uh, yeah, let's take our second break. Yes, and uh, and then we'll uh, just, uh, you know. Thank God it's... my help don't get this many breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. I'll see you in say? a little bit. All right. We'll be back with more on the Lunchbox after these words. For Gilbert's 17th Street Grill. You know me, I love family-run places with quality food at fair prices served with passion and pride. And that's why I love Gilbert's. For more than a decade, Lenore, Beth, and Richie Gilbert have been serving up the best burgers, wings, ribs, salads, and desserts. It's a fast, casual spot. Everything prepared fresh to order from an immaculate open kitchen. They're at 1821 Cordova Road in Fort Lauderdale in the Cordova shops just south of 17th Street. Open every day but Sunday. One of my favorite burgers in South Florida. Big, round, juicy pucks of 100% Angus beef. Char grilled to perfection. And don't miss the sweet potato fries on the side. They're legendary. Go to Gilbert's. Feast and be happy. Tell them the Lunchbox sent you. When I'm looking for some wicked good food for a wicked good lunch, there's only one place to go. That's Wicked Cheesesteaks in Fort Lauderdale. It's at 4824 North Federal Highway, just south of Commercial Boulevard and across from Holy Cross Hospital. My friend Brian there, he will hook you up with some really tasty treats. They've got cheesesteaks just like the best you can find in Philly, along with lobster rolls, because that's where he's from, Maine originally. And they have wings and pizza and everything you want to have a really good good time wicked cheesesteaks they're open every day but tuesday check them out online wickedcheesesteaks.com tell them the lunchbox sent you if you're looking for a great place for steaks seafood and more go to tropical acres steakhouse and butcher shop it's at 2500 griffin road in dania just west of i-95 in the airport they've been there a long time since 1949 that means they're doing something right You'll get old school hospitality from the Studio Alley family, along with great value for tremendous service. Of course, you could also go into the bar for happy hour every day, four to six, and they have great value all night long. Also, a butcher shop that's open every day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., except Sunday. The dining room is open every day at 4 30, except Sunday. Go to Tropical Acres, tell them the lunchbox sent you. Looking for an exquisite sushi experience? Kaizen Sushi Bar and Grill in Fort Lauderdale is the place to go. 5640 North Federal Highway, just north of Commercial Boulevard. 
chef owner Hui Lam. He's a sushi savant, slicing and serving pristine fish and seafood flown in directly from Japan and around the world. Nigiri, sashimi, special rolls, and omakase dinners. He's ruined me from going anywhere else. It's that good. Open seven days for dinner and also for lunch. Even if you're not a sushi fan, they have great cooked options, including steaks, chops, rice and noodles, and other Japanese dishes. It's fantastic. For reservations and information, go to kaizenflorida.com. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. Delicious Mexican food with innovative twists. Margaritas with a medley of tongue-tingling flavors. I'm talking about Taco Craft, Taqueria, and Tequila Bar. The place to go on Taco Tuesday and every day. It's located at 510 North Federal and Highway in Fort Lauderdale and also in Lauderdale-by-the-Sea at Plantation Walk and soon in Coral Springs. Taco Craft has specials every day, including bottomless drinks for a Sunday brunch and Taco Tuesdays with their $4 premium tacos, including their new Berea tacos with bone marrow broth. Oh, it's so good. They've even made a taco lover out of me, and they've got so much more, including fajitas, that open face smashed cheeseburger tortilla that's new, and a guacamole sample that's an explosion of flavors. Kitchen is open late. There's delivery and takeout. For more information, go to tacocraft.com. Tell them Mike Mayo, the Lunchbox, sent you. We're back on the lunchbox. Mark Fried sticking around the whole time. This is what happens when we come in early. You know what? We can start doing this on the regular. I think I'm on overtime. Uh, (laughs) Man's going a distance here today. Always a pleasure. Well, I I wanted to keep you around because this is another topic that I think is near and dear to your heart as as well as every... New How do you York, know I have born a and <laughs> You have a big heart. That's, you know, that's I, I know. A you, you're a big softy. Um, Chinese food, uh, something that is never discussed on the Let's Eat South Florida <laughs> group. <laughs> New York style Chinese. Uh, I went last night back the return uh, after kind of an inauspicious debut oh, a few duck. weeks ago when they first opened. It was actually a pre-opening party. Peking Duck this. House. Oh, I heard about that. In they just reopened. Pompano Beach. Again, do you, you want to give them the lowdown on the history of the place? It was a devil's haunt for years. Uh, I used to like it a lot. I mean, uh, and I had friends that uh, were sort of discriminating Chinese, New York, authentic type guys that uh, thought it was... Uh, you know, very close to what they experienced and enjoyed so much when they were living and uh, dining in the Big Apple. Uh, I, I always thought it was very good. I, I like the fact that the owner there, uh, who unfortunately passed away, and I believe that's the reason that the family eventually sold, was uh, a, a sick stone degenerate. Because when I went in there the first time, Mark, you can appreciate this. Uh, I see under the menus, the takeout menus, uh, he's got the goal sheet, and he's sending in action on the Lakers. So I thought, I, I love this place. But I thought their food was better than the average Chinese place that you would find around. There are many that that have decent quality, but but this place was a little better. It may not have been Rainbow Palace, but the prices weren't anywhere near there. And I was sorry to see it close and happy to see it reopen. As Mike mentioned, we had a a, a less than distinguished uh, uh, beginning there. as uh, we, we were waiting um, around for a while, and a service was quite up to speed. Yeah, yeah. Pre-opening party. Oh, no, it was a disaster. The first time uh, was a disaster. It was a disaster. I'm going to be honest. I mean, be honest. Was. But last night, All three re- is what? redemption. Yeah, they he, had. He, he had to be somewhere an hour and a half later, and an hour later we still hadn't ordered, so they, he had to leave and didn't get to eat. We got invited from it was like a tasting. The food wasn't bad. No, the food was actually okay. <laughs> the food was actually good when The we got food it. that we got, it was very slow and disorganized because things that day, it, it was a – one of those, you know, uh, things got switched up at the last minute. They thought it was going to be like a buffet or a past place. Instead, they said, oh, let's just do regular service. And everybody arrived at the same time. And right. it, that wasn't good. All right. Redemption. Last night. You want the five-second synopsis of the 90-second dissertation, uh, In the middle. Let's go 90. I mean, we've got time. Let's go. Okay. Uh, and again, so <laughs> Peking Duck House reopened uh, about six weeks ago uh, on Atlantic. Uh, it's Atlantic. Boulevard, yeah, yeah, Atlantic yeah, Boulevard, yeah. yeah. Uh, between US One and I ninety five, yeah, right by Gianni's, okay. a little bit uh, further to the west. Okay, uh, happy to report service. You know, went in there last night about six thirty. Place was mostly full, parking lot almost completely full, uh, but things were under control. They have a general manager, AA, who would took good care of us, and uh, but the service staff was on point. Things came out quickly. They've, you know, when we were wow. first in there, it seemed like they had a scaled back and slightly odd menu, and then it was more like the Asian fusion stuff. Now it seems like they realize Chinese. people want Chinese, Cantonese, classic style uh, 
uh, Cantonese. Gotta that, stay in your neighborhood. That na- right. that that menu. They still have like one or two things, like maybe uh, uh, they have a pod thai. They have a sej- They have a couple of Szechuan dishes, but mostly Cantonese classic stuff. They've redone the pricing, so now like a bowl of soup. I think when we first went in, they were showing it like eight dollars. They've got it down to five dollars for the wonton soup, the hot and sour so- soup, the wonton soup. Really good broth, a little bit different, I'm a little hot bit and sour, guys. And the hot and sour. Okay, so the hot and sour was different. It had a little bit of a sweeter edge to it. Um, it needed a little bit more hot, spicy kick, which they could bring the chili oil. But the interior, the the consistency, the tofu, they had the shreds of pork. Mm-hmm. They have the other little uh, vegetables, and the flavor overall was great. I mean, I love the flavor. The food was really good all up and down last night. Uh, some modern spins on things. We got these duck bao buns. Wow. The bao buns and the duck were great, but they put pickles. They put pickles they did it the on, last time, which is a little odd. Yeah. But you know what? I, I don't like, even know what they are. The they think they're Chick Fil A. Bao okay, buns are those dough rice that's dough, those like doughy. Soft. I'll, I'll show you a picture. But um, it's a it, weird consistency, but it's really good. There's a lot of flavor to it. Yeah, I so it's good for like a smaller sandwich. You know, we had a dim sum uh, platter, some, you know, the dumplings, they all tasted good. The wontons and the wonton soup were good. You could tell they were freshly made. Uh, And then we had a couple of things for a main course. We got a Szechuan chicken uh, with those, you know, those peppercorns, those Szechuan peppercorns, which I love. Nice. That was a good, nice, light dish. Some people find it a little dry, but if you put it with some rice and soy sauce perfect and then we got the sizzling platter nice. and yet this is something that reminded me of my brooklyn youth where it's like a combination of shrimp scallops beef and chicken with some vegetables uh over this sizzling hot platter it comes out very germanic it's, uh, oh, it's nice. kind of like fajitas like a chinese fajitas mm-hmm. almost um and everything there was good the sauce was good, good. so i give it the thumbs up nice. um congrats to again this uh, restaurant, the ownership now, Tina Wang and her husband Jason are opening Asian and sushi places all over. They're opening Coral a Springs, new you said, right? in Coral Springs, so, the Psycho Eye, which nice. is uh, off. So they're opening another one right now? Well, no, they're going to bring another Peking Duck House that you heard it here first to Boca Raton. They're going to oh, wow. be branding uh, it in Duck that's House. That's freaking cool. I think the Chinese just opened up over there well, not long ago. Red Boca, something? Yeah, that red. Um, Expensive. You Red know what? Leaves? I'm blanking on it. Uh, it's but I know what you're talking about. It is a little bit expensive. It's more along the lines of the, um, you know, Rainbow Palace pricing. This place, oh, the Boca. pricing was like I would say it's along the lines of Christina Wands on the east side of Fort Lauderdale. Red Waterdale. Pine. Red Pine is the Red one Pine. in Boca. You got it. But uh, Peking Duck House, they are planning to go into the Boca market because Boca people are always clamoring on the group for the Chinese New York style food. Chinese. Yes. And uh, I give uh, Peking Duck House the lunchbox seal of approval. Nice. I wow. uh, heartily recommend it. And now I will try it. I look forward to checking out more of the packed. menu. Whenever I drive by, it's always packed. And uh, it, they seem to got their stuff. Have They have their stuff together. Nice. And the outfit that runs it also owns and operate that uh, Koi restaurant in uh, Fort Lauderdale, the same plaza as Gilbert's. They have uh, Yakitori, which is up in Delray Beach. I just Beach. Ate Last Did week, you? first time, it was good. Where in? Uh, where's that? In, in uh, Miza. Oh, okay, yeah, they have. Uh, uh, they also right by Funky Biscuit. They have a bunch of favorite. places, and uh, but this was their first foray into kind of traditional Chinese food, uh, and it seems like. And this is what I always tell people: don't go the first week of restaurant yeah. opens. No, you're gonna Difficult. get nothing. And no, saying, we weren't. Con- we we didn't condemn them. No, openly. no. We said we understood. go back. We just. Well, that's good. I hope honest. everybody does what you guys yeah. do. <laughs> well, he well, taught I remember me that. When he we taught opened. me that. When we opened, it was. It was brutal. Now really? it's smooth like silk. Well, what yeah. I because look, it's it's about expectations, right? No matter what, a relationship, your children, a restaurant, it's all about your expectations. Right. And I was a big fan of Grandpa's and Mayo was the diner, right? Right. But once I wrap my head around, okay, it's Grandpa's the deli. Again, there's no to me, there's no better deli in South Florida. So like, Thank you. you just gotta understand, Beaking Duck House is different now, but it can still be great. Yeah. And, that, and that's the thing. Like they don't present the lo mein and the fried rice and those old silver yeah. things well, where they lift the lid. It's, no, it's those, a little nicer. Those days little, are gone. They've got more modern they were plating cool, and touches. I remember those. But I love those because it kept things hot. You know, they're <laughs> practical. But um, it's a presentation. But again, um, yeah, and I would say that. Look, Deep, I don't How's know about you, but I, it, people like always say, "Oh well, they're charging real money the first week. Why shouldn't I?" <laughs> On the Yelp the first week, and I was like, yeah. have a heart, you know, just and then just don't go, just don't, don't go. So you're saying the menu prices are lower. I mean, one thing they were great at in the past, and I, I would hope it would stay consistent. Uh, what was they were terrific on takeout orders? If you were picking something up, it, it was always spot on. It, it, you didn't wow. have to worry that something That's was missing. I mean, that really, 
I mean, in my experience there, which involved probably, you know, at least 100 uh, pickups, almost oh, rarely, I mean, would they leave anything out or, or mix anything up? Yeah, yeah. They, they were very good about that. So if they stay uh, with that principle and, you know, they they're obviously have improved what they did uh, when we were there for the opening, then... And it seems like it's very popular. Every time I blow by there, the parking lot's it full. Is. Lunch and dinner. So, time, but it seems it's like it's very really good. There's very few really good ones. And yeah. If you get a good one, I mean, yeah. it's worth going. Once in a while, you get that urge. Yeah, it's a you know, relatively large freestanding building uh, with parking uh, available, uh, you know, uh, enough to accommodate a full house. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's unusual in that respect, especially by the other Chinese availabilities that are yep. in the area here, which there are quite a few. Okay. Hey, we got to take our final break. We'll uh, cut Mark Fried loose before we take the break. Oh. Let me put in the good word about our friend. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Uh, you did a You're free. job today. I got the A game. We got to get you early in the morning. Yeah, now we know. Is the number. We could always just uh, come I'm in fine. early, record it, and then air it the usual time. But this is good. We, we're doing the uh, live package, and then we're going to re air this one the week uh, of the week, the week before the Passover. Passover. Hello, so we get extra place. bang for the buck because we like to do I that. I think I'm going to risk it myself this year. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Defo, looking. how's your dog? Dog's doing uh, better. Uh, seems to be okay. Uh, watched, the problem the, may have I been the Gilbert show. That's how I know. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was unfortunate. But uh, yeah, he was struggling. I mean, he's an old guy. Uh, he he's, hangs in there though. Uh, this dog's been through everything, and uh, he's a you know, he, he, yeah, no, he, he's definitely a fighter. Yeah, That's he's Chuck Wepner of dogs. Yeah. Uh, He'll still be fighting. Wepner. Oh boy. Coming up this weekend, if you're getting ready for hosting a Final Four party, men's, women's, both. Uh, go check out Delaware Chicken and Seafood Market. They got great stuff you can throw on the grill for any kind of gathering. Uh, they got the great poultry, chicken. They've got, of course, great seafood. Throw some fish and shrimp yep. on the barbie. Uh, and if you want to have a nice little appetizer round uh, during the games, they you can't the fish dip. Their fish dip, and of course, get a platter of stone crabs. I can't believe it's the last couple of weeks until stone crab season is over. May first the final day for stone crab so you want to get in there and get them now 4191 north state road 7 delawarechicken.com is the website go online they're open seven days better yet go in there beautiful place beautiful display cases they've also got meats and steaks and pork chops and all the items that you need for your entertaining at home or just uh, daily day-to-day -day cooking delawarechicken.com tell them the lunchbox sent you all right. Was there, was there as much fanfare this year about the stone crab season mail in your estimation see sandwich it, nope. it didn't. It didn't seem like uh, stone no, crabs were, were as think, popular an item as they've been in the past. I think uh, what's happened is it's finally priced itself out of the market. Yeah, it's okay. Instead positive. of like a once a week or even once a month food, it's just become special, special occasion. Yeah, special. You know, New Year's. Yeah, I, I came across them far less. I mean, even in terms of conversation, like people like you want to go yeah. for stone crabs or whatever. And, didn't and, hear nearly as much about them as uh, we used to, I think. It's what happens. Supply, yeah. demand, and when the pricing gets too much, it's just uh, some things just become, you know, out of reach for many people. Yeah. Uh, but I say that you could get in there and get those mediums, which are the best value. Uh, Delaware, we love them. All right. Let's come back after Final these break. words. We'll wrap up the first edition of the Lunchbox. Early bird, man. Early bird Ooh. special. Love it. For food from a scratch kitchen, delicious drinks, and house-made spirits from a craft bar. A great vibe inside and out with a spacious patio. I'm talking about Batch New Southern Kitchen and Tap, Fort Lauderdale, in the heart of the city at 525 North Federal Highway. It's open seven days for lunch, dinner, and weekend brunch with classics like fried chicken and waffles and shrimp and grits and creative items like pecan-crusted salmon and a fried green tomato BLT. And the drinks? Smooth, sipping, and so good. There's convenient free parking and a garage next door, happy hour at the bar, an entire patio, 4 to 7, Monday to Friday, and live music every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's pet and people friendly and with cozy fire pits for when the temperature dips. For reservations and more information, go to BatchSouthernKitchen.com. Hey, it's Mayo here for Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Since 1951, for over 70 years, the home of freshness. I've been a customer for over three decades, and it's the place to go for poultry, steaks, meats, and, of course, their unbelievable selection of fish and seafood. They've got it all. Key West pink shrimp, grouper, snapper, lobster, and, of course, Florida stone crab claws of all sizes. Don't forget their famous fish dip and a full selection of prepared foods. It's located at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, just across from the Seminole Classic Casino. Doug Carter and crew will take great care of you. Make sure to check out their weekly specials and daily catch online at DelawareChicken.com. 
quality, value, freshness. That's the Delaware way. Tell them Mike Mayo and the Lunchbox sent you. If you like seafood in a comfortable setting, outdoors, even keel fish shack at the corner of A1A and Commercial Boulevard in Lauderdale by the Sea, and also now with a new location on Las Olas Boulevard. Those are my spots. Upscale food in a down-home setting. The chef owners, Dave and Brad, do a terrific job with all the seafood classics that you want. They have the best grilled oysters in town, bang-bang shrimp, lobster rolls, and deli fish specials. They also have weekend brunch Saturday and Sunday. They have deli happy hour, 4 to 7. And they also have other weekly specials like mussels on Monday and oysters on Tuesday. Go to Even Keel Fish Shack and tell them that the Lunchbox sent you. All right, that's it, Defo. We did it. We had a nice oh, early bird job. special. No more yeah. early birds at Tropical Acres now. No. Somebody uh, realized it on the group. They saw it on the menu, wow. and it's true. The early bird has been retired uh, at uh, Tropical Acres as they celebrate their 75th anniversary. You can still go in there and get their great happy hours. Uh, Monday well, that's through the whole Friday, thing. Is early birds not a big deal these days. It's yeah. happy hours. Basically the same. Yeah. The place is packed. And, uh, yeah, you still get great value there because even with your regular uh, dinner during the dining hours, you get a salad Sides, and a side dish. Thing. So that and alone makes it uh, great value at Tropical Acres. We love them. And you could get give them a call for their uh, Mother's Day, getting on the books for the reservations on Sunday, May 12th, 954-989-2500. Tropical Acres, 954-989-2500. Don't forget, Grandpa's for Passover. Give them a call here, 954-923-2163. Look it up online, Grandpa's. And we got to get out of here. we got to go motoring up we the road. We have a regular edition at Another 1 o'clock show. One from o'clock. Elizabeth's in West Palm Beach. So join us at wow. 1 o'clock. We are, we are, we're hitting well, what are you guys doing up there, man? Uh, that sounds exciting. It's Elizabeth's, and we're going to be sitting down and talking with Lisbeth Suma, who's the director of culinary for Big Time Restaurant Group. They've got a whole Ooh. bunch of restaurants, Rocco's Tacos, Louis Bossi, Elizabeth's, uh, Big City yeah, Tavern, more, yeah. uh, City Oyster in Delray. They are big time. That's why they call yes. themselves that. And Got some nice, nice places. Chat with nice Elizabeth's. portfolio. We're going to be looking at their new – they just debuted this rooftop bar called Capri Bar. Overlooking nice. the whole intracoastal and harbor up there in West Palm Beach, and we figured we'd save you a schlep, Defo. But we're, uh, <laughs> oh, thank you. No, that's great. Uh, it sounds very exciting. Uh, my car, uh, by as if driven by magnetic force field, uh, goes right into the uh, Palm Beach Kennel Club. Whenever yeah, I, that's I, the I other one. <laughs> this, you got to take our right. All right, we got to get out of here. Thanks everybody for tuning in. And look, I did not touch the potato or the bagel. The I win the bet. Well. I win the. Well, bet. you're going to have lunch now at a fancy yeah. place. So uh, okay, right. uh, but good job there. Uh, we, we're all rooting for you, Mike Mayo. We just don't want to hear about it with every morsel of food that goes by. <laughs> Until then, uh, well, I could eat later. this, but I might be and, able to eat uh, that. But I had something. No, you don't have to do uh, the in-depth analysis on everybody. Enjoy uh, every bunless sandwich. Yeah.